in order for you to make the best use out of your microscope system, I will give you now two lectures on the scanning electron microscope. Uh, the first lecture I will talk about the probe current and uh, spot size and signal to noise ratio. Uh, in the second lecture we talk about uh, this uh, scanning rustering image uh, effects and uh, what, what you need to think of and, and I will also talk about the interaction with, of the electrons of, from the beam that interacts with the sample. So probe size and current of the beam. Uh, what you can say that is that you, you can change the spot size of the beam in an electron microscope. And, uh, a few parameters affect this. And in the course book you can see an equation that relates to this and that states that the beam diameter called the dp is uh, given by equation that states it's uh, proportional to the beam current over the brightness beta of the source times pi square and aperture angle in, in focus squared and everything in square root. This says that if you drop the beam current then you also reduce spot size. And you want to have the spot size in theory as small as possible because that reduces the area that you will get the information from and thereby increasing resolution, right? But it also states that the brightness of the source governs this. So uh, and the brightness uh, is, uh, you can define that as uh, the intensity of the source divided by the area that's uh, creating this, uh, this uh, light. So, uh, what, what you can, we can take an example on that. If you have a tungsten filament source, that is a big metallic wire that glows and radiates electrons. And that illuminating area is uh, rather big if you compare that to a field emission unit. That's uh, sort of more looks like this pen, a small, small needle, and the electrons are only emitted from the outermost top here. So then all intensity comes from a very, very small region. So the field emission will have a brightness that's one times, 1,000 times larger than the tungsten source. The Lab 6 crystal filament is sort of between 100 times larger than the tungsten source. So either you buy a new microscope and increase the brightness in that way, or you can change the brightness also by increasing the accelerating voltage of the gun. And uh, you can see that it's directly proportional. The brightness beta is proportional to the accelerating voltage. And what you need to have in mind here is that if you increase the accelerating voltage, usually a microscope goes for a few kilovolts up to perhaps 30 kilovolts. And if you do that complete change, then uh, the, beam, the beam size will perhaps drop to half. Uh, if you instead switch from a uh, tungsten source to a field emission source, then the beam size at the same current level will be a factor of 10 smaller. So changing the accelerating voltage cannot uh, replace switching to a field emission unit. It can improve it, but uh, no, not as much. So uh, another thing to think of is that if you improve the accelerating voltage too much, uh, or increase the accelerating voltage too much, then you can also uh, create uh, sample damages because you shoot at the sample with more energetic electrons. So you need to avoid that region as well. So the third factor that depending on, on this uh, spot size, the spot size is depending on a third factor, and that's the aperture angle. And that means that if you have a gun up here and the sample below, below here at the, where the book is, you focus the beam into a spot. And that focusing angle affects the spot size. So if that angle is small, which means you need to put the sample very close up to the gun. If you do that, then the angle will be very high. Then you can achieve a much smaller spot size compared to if you have the sample very, very long bottom beneath the gun. 
And there's also a practical thing here. If you have the aperture angle too high, that will make more strain on the optics. It's hard to build ideal electron optics. And these side effects will be more apparent when you increase the aperture angle. So here you have a give and take situation. You want to increase the angle to as much as possible, but still not be out in this uh, zone where the uh, aberrations of the microscope starts to take over and drop the resolutions for you. So, yeah, summary. Small spot size, low beam current, high brightness on the source, great uh, aperture angle. The next thing is uh, the, the, oh, this is a continuation on the beam current. If you drop the beam current so it becomes uh, too low, then you will of course have a noise takeover in the detector. The detector measures a signal. Uh, I can draw that for you. Uh, let's say that we have this graph. Here I draw on the x-axis we have the surface uh, of a profile. And on the y-axis we have a signal intensity. We can say this is a cross-section view of, of, the, of the surface. Then I add some noise on this signal with my red pen here. Then we can see in this graph that uh, uh, the big values and mountains in it will be visible because that's higher than the noise rate you hear. But the small changes in the middle of this graph those will not be visible because it will be hidden in the noise. There is a criteria that governs this. It's called the rose visibility criteria. And that states that if for you, to, in order to distinguish two objects from the background in the signal, then the signal must be five, the signal change must be five times larger than the noise. So, the signal change must be five times larger than the noise. Now, the, the signal, what's that? That's the electrons that we measure in the detector. So, that is a counting of discrete values. And that gives us that we have a, can describe the noise as a statistical uh, phenomenon. So, the change in signal must be more than five times the square root of the average of the counting. If we relate this to the contrast of the image, we know that contrast is the relative change in signal compared to the overall signal. Contrast is a change of signal relative to the background signal must be larger than five times the statistical noise error over the signal, which is the same as the total count. And that means that the signal counting average value must be bigger than five times over the contrast that we want squared. So now when we know how many electrons we need to count in order to achieve the contrast necessary to actually detect this feature in the image, we can describe this as a function of time. And that time is called the dwelling time. And we can say that the electrons that we count is an electrical signal. That is basically just the number of electrons times the elementary charge divided by the dwelling time. We know that the image is a digital image, that's a raster image pixel by pixel. And uh, these pixels we need will be a scanning position on the sample where we count electrons. And that means that in order to achieve this uh, minimum number of electrons that we need to count, we need to spend a minimum amount of time in each pixel when we do this counting. If this is a backscattering detectoring image we're taking, we know that the backscattering electrons is a function of the elements, and that is depending on what's called the backscattering coefficients. And uh, yes, a rough value, we can say that it's around half. So that, that means that the, the signal, this uh, current signal in the detector, 
will be proportional to the beam current. It will not be the same, but it will be proportional. And this proportional factor we can call epsilon. So then we can describe the minimum beam current that is required in order to fulfill the necessary amount of electrons that need to be counted in the detector on this certain dwelling time. Because we scan the image pixel by pixel, we can choose us the screen resolution of this image. If you want a higher resolution, then that means that you need to scan more pixels. And if you want to achieve that in the same frame rate time, the dwelling time must be reduced. And thus so that means that you need to increase beam current. So you can relate the dwelling time to the scanning frame rate, basically. So then we can set, give a value on the dwelling time as a function of the time to scan an image. So basically what this says is that if you drop the beam current, then you need to increase the dwelling time in order to achieve the same signal to noise ratio. And if you need to have a higher dwelling time, that means that you either must scan with a lower resolution in the image, fewer pixels, or you need to increase the, the total time to scan the full image. All right, so summarize lecture one. I talked about the, the spot size and the, the importance of knowing the, the what's control this because it affects the resolution. You need to have a small spot size as possible. That's usually the case. Uh, the, the brightness, high brightness, gives a better performance and different kind of guns can give different brightness. You have uh, the focusing aperture angle, that's uh, good to have that large, that will give it beneficial for you. The, the beam current will also have an effect on this, but if you have a too low beam current, then you will get the uh, practical signal to noise ratio problem and uh, that will give uh, a noise image and poor results. So the, that was lecture one, and now I want you to continue and do some problems. I've given those below here, and after that uh, you can continue on lecture two that I will give. And then I talk uh, about uh, the, the beam that interacts with the sample, and uh, there we have a different problem situation. And it sort of contradicts what I've said in here lecture one. So and, uh, in lecture two I will also give you a complex problem to solve and discuss with other colleagues in your group. So good luck with the questions below and see you on lecture two.